Hello, hello, everyone. GM, um, thanks for joining us. You know, day three in the morning of a conference is not the easiest uh, journey to make, let's say. Um, <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about composability. Uh, we have Amol from QuickNode, and we're going we're gonna to talk about you know, how composability is really the, the, the secret ingredient um, in blockchains that lets us unlock a huge amount of value and creativity. So, Amol, I don't know if you want to start by telling us a little bit about QuickNode. You know, you guys just had a massive, sure. uh, a, a, well, a pretty hefty funding round led by Tiger Global. Yep. Yeah, so um, what QuickNode does, so we are leaders in blockchain infrastructure. So imagine cloud computing means blockchain. Um, essentially, what we do is we, um, our mission is to make blockchain development really easy across multiple different types of chains. Uh, and recently, we announced a funding round with Tiger. Um, they're one of our backers, along with Alexis Ohanian's 776 funds. He, he was on stage earlier. Um, and we are multi-chain from the start. So we really do believe that uh, the future is going to be focused on composability. Uh, and it's ultimately going to be something where it's not just one chain that wins. It's going to be multiple chains. Each chain has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. And, and we think that um, that's going to enrich the overall ecosystem. Well, I just wanted to sort of set the stage and zoom out a little bit, you know, before we dive into um, Solana-specific stuff. But, you know, what does composability across chains sort of mean for, for a multi-chain world? Yeah, so um, the easiest way of thinking about this is uh, if you look at the evolution of the DeFi marketplace, right? So um, total value locked across all of DeFi is something like $300 billion. Uh, if you look back a year ago, almost 100% of it was focused on Ethereum. Uh, today, uh, Ethereum has about a 75% market share. So it's like a little over 200 billion in TVL. Uh, and now you have other chains where there's a lot of DeFi activity that's taking place, mm -hmm. right? So Binance Smart Chain is number two. Uh, Solana is number three with about 15 billion total value locked. How all of, but there, there's advantages, right, when it comes to some of these chains, like Solana, right, which is really focused on low transaction costs and speed. And so the way that you can go from 15 billion to 300 billion is, is ultimately by making something that's, that's interlockable, right? It's like uh, Legos for finance. Mm -hmm. And so composability, which means that you can basically take an asset from one ecosystem, move it to another chain, that, that's really fundamental in terms of this multi-chain future that we're going to see. Mm -hmm. And so you guys have a, have a great view across, I think you support like 10 different chains, right? Um, so you have a great view across this multi-chain landscape. Um, for Solana specifically, what does that look like for you all? Like how much, you know, for example, of your business is uh, Solana specific? So Solana is one of our fastest growing chains. And we just launched in August. Um, we've seen almost a 12x increase in terms of uh, total number of developers. In fact, today, quick note, I think we support uh, almost 25% of all development across the Solana ecosystem. So wow. we're pretty significant. We work with the leading exchanges, wallet providers, all of that. Um, and we're seeing just a ton of interest and activity in Solana, right? And a lot of, of movement here across mm -hmm. the board. So it's, it's really an exciting time. Well, I mean, speaking of, you know, sort of the, the inbound interest, um, you know, what sorts of customers or what so sorts of businesses are you seeing coming through to you? We work with the leading wallet providers, uh, exchanges, both centralized and decentralized, analytic providers. Um, so our, our customer base really varies, right? Mm -hmm. um, we work with multi-billion hedge funds to bedroom developers. Uh, and at the end of the day, what, what everybody's most interested in is essentially um, a service that has low latency, uh, that has access to multiple types of chains so that you can boot one chain and then you have access to multiple others. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's been what we've been really focused on. That's been driving the growth. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, I guess we can't really talk about you know, enterprise or business interest in crypto these days without 
talking about NFTs. Um, are you seeing, you know, interest from, let's say, you know, brands or companies that, you know, are not from finance, for example, that are interested in, in getting involved? Yeah, I mean, there's just been an explosion in terms of the number of DeFi projects, um, uh, sorry, of, of NFT projects um, on Solana. In fact, uh, just last week, so there was the NFT con in New York, right? And there was just this so much palpable energy from all of these different uh, projects. And we work with a number of them. Yeah. Um, a lot of the sort of leading um, NFT developers, projects, um, exchanges. Uh, and so that's been, there's just been a tremendous amount of interest. Mm -hmm. And Solana has a lot of interesting elements about it, right? The low transaction costs, the ability to mint relatively cheaply. Uh, I think they're attracting a lot of different projects. So we see that continuing. Gotcha. I mean, just to go back to the multi-chain world theme again, you know, l let's say um, a, a brand comes to you, they say we want to mint our first NFT collection. Yeah. Um, you know, where should we do it? What chain should we use? Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Like, how do you, I guess, kind of guide them through that process? It's a good question. I think that um, it, it depends in terms of what a specific project's really looking to accomplish. Right. So at the end of the day, um, our job right, is to provide basically a fast, high quality infrastructure. Some projects are really interested in Ethereum because that's where there's historically been um, a lot of NFT projects created. Others are focused on Matic because of the low transaction costs and the fact that you can still tie to Ethereum. Solana is seeing a lot of interest lately. right? Um, and so it depends in terms of. Uh, where you are in the ecosystem, whether there's a lot of historical development, whether you're interested in, um, in governance, whether you're interested in speed, the trilemma still applies. Um, and so it, it varies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the, the short way of answering it. But um, what we are seeing, right, is that there's just been a lot of interest in essentially um, minting projects, uh, a lot of different types of projects. And, and what you're starting to see is different business models that are emerging too, mm. right? It's not just JPEGs. Um, it's also around music. And, and the guys from Audius, they were up here earlier, right? They're building on Solana. Uh, I think that you can start to see a whole wave of consumer applications mm -hmm. that are, are, are forming, where it's not just JPEGs, but you're going to start to see music. You're going to start to see social networks. Um, so yesterday, right, Alexis Ohanian, he um, announced with the Solana Foundation mm -hmm. that they are investing $100 million in the next wave of social development. Um, he's one of our backers. We believe that that's the future. Um, and at this conference, right, there's a number of interesting projects. Chingari, I think they want to be the TikTok of India um, and built on Web3. And I think that's just an example of just many of the, the opportunity that's here. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we were talking earlier, and you know, you worked at some of the biggest um, Web two, let's say, um, platforms, right, including yep. TikTok. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, when you look at you know application developers coming to you today, um, you know, they look out. There's, it's a multi-chain ecosystem. Developers now can pick and choose, right, which chains they want to start off on or which ones they want to be on. Versus, uh, it feels like a few years ago. Uh, it was much more like, well, you pick the chain, the chain dictates you know, what you can do as, as an application developer. Um, is, is that, do you see that happening? Is, that, is there a bit of a shift more towards in favor of application developers now? I, mean, I think that's the promise of Web3. Yeah, I, you're right. I did come from the world of, I, I worked at Facebook, I worked at TikTok. And uh, uh, Chris Dixon put something where it was just talking about how at the beginning of the platform's evolution, right, um, it's very friendly towards creators. And over time, that, that dynamic changes. And so as a result, right, you end up having more power accruing to the platform. And a lot of the creators really don't have a say. So the concept of portability, right, which is tied to composability, is something which is premised on Web3. That's the power of what mm. a lot of the people in this audience are creating. And uh, you are seeing that, right? The platform no longer dictates that. And so being able to take your IP and to take your data and then to monetize it across different platforms, across different chains, mm -hmm. is, I think, the fundamental 
premise behind um, the potential here of Web3. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it could be a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, we're still getting a lot of those building blocks in place, right? Like identity, for example, is a key kind of composability piece that that um, that will really turbocharge, I think, a lot of these use cases, especially social use cases, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just wondering about you know what do you think of the the current kind of Solana landscape uh, in terms of any bridges or adapters that help Solana uh, smart contracts or applications get used across other chains, for for instance. I think that um, earlier this week, sir, I met with some of the uh, the people from Neon Labs. They did a, or Neon, uh, and they are I think really kind of at the bleeding edge in terms of of making it easy for people to take something from Ethereum and then port it over to Solana and vice versa, right? And um, it takes advantage of technologies like wormhole um, that are really kind of at the, the heart of, of what, uh, of essentially making it easy to, to move from one platform to another. Um, so I'm really kind of excited just about uh, the emergence of that, and I think ultimately it will get to, it will help the foundation reach its goal mm. of getting to, I think, a million developers, uh, which today we're at about 2,000, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of room to grow, right, yeah. to catch up to Ethereum and some of these other more established chains. Yeah, plenty of runway. Um, and maybe lastly, we only have a, a couple of minutes left. Um, what, are the, what do you think are the pieces of the compose of the sort of money Lego or maybe social Lego, you know, um, kit, what are the pieces that are still missing? What do you think needs to be built? Um, what do you think will really unlock some really interesting use cases? From a developer standpoint, right, um, you have a lot of Solana, or sorry, a lot of Ethereum that's built on, on um, Solidity, right? And Solana runs on Rust. Uh, Neon Labs is trying to solve that because now you can take something that's written in Solidity and, and apply it to Solana. That opens up uh, the realm for a lot of developers to enter into the ecosystem. Um, so th things like that, that interoperability, are going to be really important. Uh, the second thing is just around um, people being able to uh, take that value from one ecosystem to another in a way that is uh, with, with less friction, right? It, and so that's something which you've started to see that some of the layer two solutions, um, if you have to wait a week to move back to a layer one, not ideal. Uh, instead, if you can move your assets more freely and with lower transaction costs, that opens up the entire market. Um, that's something which is going to be really important. Uh, and so I think that's another key piece. Mm. And then just with a lot of the innovation that's happening in DeFi as an example, right, where um, if you make it so that you have true interoperability between these different chains, that's going to improve transaction costs, that's going to improve liquidity. Uh, and so those are all important things as you're thinking about ultimately improving the, the user experience, right? Um, and that's, that's important in terms of being able to, to move value and to have depth of markets. And those are going to be really kind of key criterion. And we're seeing that happen. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I was talking earlier about identity. Like we just saw, for example, the Ethereum name service, <clears throat> excuse me, which is a a key, I guess, plank um, of, of the Ethereum ecosystem in terms of identity. They just did a successful you know, token airdrop and so on. Um, and it feels like those are the things that will you know, turbocharge this whole identity piece. And once you have that in place, you can do really cool things with it, especially on the social side, right? Um, you look at Twitter, for example, they're developing a, a PFP authentication um, feature. Um, so, you know, with, with good identity, you'll be able to do that in a Web3 native way. Um, and you can take it with you maybe across chains, for example. Um, so it seems like, yeah, that would be a really cool uh, social Lego to have to play with. I think you're going to see a lot more of the Web2 players trying to build Web3 capabilities. We're, we're having conversations with a number of those kinds of um, along those, those lines. Um, and, and you'll also see a lot more development happening on Web3 natively as some of these tools come online. Um, so 100%, I'm with you. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, Amal, uh, it's been a pleasure. And thanks, thanks to you all for listening. Thanks for having me.